Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to our channel. Uh, today we're gonna learn how to ethically hack your very first server using Kali Linux. So we will set up our hacking lab to include both Kali Linux and a vulnerable server from Vulnhub. And we will walk you through your very first attack against an exploitable server. So we've got a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and get going. As I mentioned, we will be going through the setup and installation of a vulnerable server on our hacking lab. Because we're using our own system with an image from Vonehub, we're able to learn how to hack systems using real world hacking techniques. So the exploitable image we're gonna to use today is the Chioptrix level one image, and it has a couple of vulnerabilities that I personally have seen during real world pen testing engagements. So I, I think this is actually a really good one to start with. Before we get into the specifics of how we set up our lab, I want to point you to our Discord server, uh, which you can find listed in the description below. If you have any questions or issues with this challenge, I want you to pop over there and ask those questions in our Hacking Challenges channel. Also, make sure you watch until the end of this video where I give additional pointers that will help you not only at hacking, but being a professional pen tester. Now, for this video, I'm going to assume that you watched my previous video on how to set up a pen testing lab using Kali Linux. But if you haven't, make sure and check it out since we will need both Kali and VirtualBox set up in advance. This video is simply building on what we did in that previous video, uh, which gives us a framework necessary to run our own pen test lab. As I mentioned, we're gonna use our virtual lab set up with Kali already installed on it. So now we need a vulnerable server to test our skills. So Vulnhub is actually a really great resource for this. Um, in the future, I strongly suggest spending a lot of time on Vulnhub.com. Browsing through their free collection of vulnerable VMs, you can pick the type of challenge you want along with the difficulty level. Uh, but for this video, as I mentioned, we're going to be using the Chioptrix level one image. Uh, I also have the link to this vulnerable image in the description below, so you don't have to go just looking for it. So there's a lot of steps required to install Chioptrix into your virtual lab, so feel free to pause this portion of the video as you follow along. If you have any questions or issues as you go through this, again, Make sure to check out our Discord server and chat with us on the Hacking Challenges channel. At a high level, what we need to do is create the structure for our vulnerable server. Then we load that image into that structure, which means we have to let VirtualBox know that we need a server with, in this case, I'm gonna say one gig of RAM, one CPU and a network connection, basically all we really need. But once we do that, then we can tell VirtualBox where to go to see the server image that fits into that structure. So let's walk through that together. Okay, so on this screen, I have the website that takes you to the Chioptrix level one virtual image. Uh, as you can see, this is from Vulnhub. And again, I'll include the image link down in the description below. Okay, so on this screen, you can see that I have the two virtual machines, the Chioptrix level one and the Kali image that we've already installed in VirtualBox. Uh, and within the Chioptrix level one folder, it is, it's got the VMX files and all the supportive files that go along with that image. Okay, so now we're in VirtualBox. Uh, we're just gonna simply create a new image. Let's just call it Chioptrix level one. And we'll keep it in the same folder. ISO image is not selected. We'll keep that off. The type, we'll change that to, uh, to Linux. And then version, we'll just select, go all the way to the bottom and then select uh, other Linux. I think it's a 32-bit. I'll just put 64, who cares? Um, and then we will uh, go ahead and click next. We'll save the memory to 1024 and one processor works perfectly fine. Don't need to do anything else. Then we will do not add a virtual hard disk at this point. Again, we don't want the system 
to create this for us. We want to provide it after we create the structure. So let's go ahead and make sure we say do not add a virtual hard disk. Click next. It looks good. Click finish. And then it'll give us a warning because we don't have a virtual machine with a hard disk. So we'll just say continue and we're ready to go to the next step, which is link the VMX file, the collection of VMX files uh, to the uh, virtual box image for the Chioptrix. Okay, so once we're at this screen, all we have to do is hit storage. Uh, under the controller, we'll just do right click and select hard drive. Then we will add and we will go to the folder that contains the Chioptrix level one. And then you'll see that there's the, the VMX uh, file that um, we can select there, click open, and then it will attach that. So I'll go ahead and choose it. And then we are ready to go. Okay, so now that I got you on this page, let's talk about networking real quick. Uh, I'm gonna go to the Chioptrix one and show you how I set up the network configuration and it needs to be mirrored exactly for the Kali. Uh, so I have under here, uh, adapter one is attached to the NAT network, the name NAT network. Advanced, I allow all and then keep the cable connected. And uh, just to go over to the Kali and show you that it's exactly the same, NAT network, NAT network, advanced, allow all. All right, if you don't have a NAT network, in my case, the VirtualBox 7.0 did not come with it turned on. Uh, you can just simply go over to File, you go to Tools, go to Network Manager, click on the NAT networks, and then create a new one and make sure that DHCP is enabled. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and launch them and take a look at what we have as far as our pen testing environment. Okay, so we are now all set up and ready to hack the target system. The best part of this challenge is the Chioptrix server mimics real world vulnerabilities and actually allows us to learn how to hack them ethically and safely since we are on our own network using a server from VulnHub. Okay, on the screen right now, I'm at the Kali box and I look to see what my IP address was. Uh, so ETH zero, Ethernet zero is at 10.0.2.4. And uh, what I did is I did an ARP dash scan and I found out that beyond my IP address, there was also .1.2.3.5. Well, I know that it's the .5 simply because DHCP likes to go next up, next up. And so we're just gonna assume that it's the .5 and then move forward from that. Uh, if you need to do a little bit more investigation, you can by simply running an NMAP and scanning that system to look to see if it has all the ports that we need it to have. Once we've identified our target, we can begin by scanning and gathering information about the target. Nmap is the best tool for this step in the reconnaissance phase. Make sure you check out the Nmap crash course video to understand all the intricacies and pitfalls surrounding Nmap. So the next command I'm gonna use is the Nmap command. Like I said, I'm gonna use the dash S capital V and dash capital O. Because I'm using the dash capital O, I need to use sudo. So let's go ahead and run it and see what the results are. So I wanna stop here while Nmap is scanning on our system and specifically talk to those that are absolute beginners watching this video. The steps we're gonna go through are going to be foreign to you, but that's, that's totally okay. So when I taught hacking as a professor, I would always tell my students that the best way to learn to hack is to have a cheater's mentality in the beginning of your educational journey. Don't simply try to figure things out on your own. That's, it's just too painful and just takes too long. Go find videos just like this one and follow along with the tutorials, especially since you don't know what those tools do. And don't feel bad that you don't understand how to perform a pen test because at this stage, you're absolutely not expected to understand any of this at this point. Eventually it will start to make sense, especially as you see the same tools used over and over for the same purpose. Only once you start seeing patterns and begin to understand when these tools are used, should you start to dive deeper into understanding those tools and the methodology around pen testing. Again, if you're a beginner, 
just mimic what I do and what others do until you feel more comfortable. It's okay, and it's actually expected. Don't be a martyr. Don't suffer through figuring this stuff out. It's okay to cheat at this stage. So let's take a look at what Nmap found for us. We can see that there is a web server and an SMB server running on the system. Now that we have identified applications running on the system, let's find some vulnerabilities. The first one I'm gonna look at is the SMB server. So let's run some commands to find out if there is actually an exploit available. Okay, so the next command we're gonna use is the MSF console. That's gonna launch Metasploit. That will be able to get us the information for the SMB version information. Okay, Metasploit is up and running. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, we have an SMB scanner in the Metasploit, uh, and we just typed in use auxiliary scanner SMB SMB underscore version. There's a couple things we need to do. We need to set the our host, the remote host, so we'll do that now. And next thing we need to do is run. All right, so it says that it's Samba 2.2.1a. Now that we have that information, let's go to another tool real quick to see if there's any exploits available for that target. So the command we're gonna use is searchploit and then the application, so Samba and then space and then 2.2.1a. Now I'll run that and we'll get a bunch of information to see if there's uh, any vulnerabilities, exploitable vulnerabilities against this target. And we see here the very first line, it says trans to open overflow in Metasploit. That's telling us that there is a exploit within the Metasploit framework that we can use against this particular system because it is within the 2.2.0 to 2.2.8. So it does indeed look like we have a potentially exploitable vulnerability. Now that we have identified a vulnerability, we can attempt to exploit them responsibly, right? This is a lab, no harm is done to the real world systems. It, if this was actually a real world engagement as a professional penetration tester, we would have already worked out with the customer with the rules of engagement on what we can and cannot do when we actually find a potentially exploitable vulnerability. Since the server is running on my system, I'm the owner, I give myself full authorization to exploit it, even if it crashes the system. So, so let's go ahead and exploit it using the following commands. Okay, so I changed the payload. It used the reverse TCP. I wanted a shell, so I used the shell reverse TCP payload. And then I set our hosts to our target, and now I'm just gonna exploit it. Okay, we can see here that it's actually connecting to the remote system. It's running the exploit and it's trying to create shells. So we'll give it some time and we'll see what we get back. All right, so at this point, in theory, we have a shell. It doesn't look like it. It just shows you that a bunch of stuff happened and then we have a prompt that's just waiting for us. So let's go ahead and actually do some commands to see what uh, what we get back. So I'm going to do the who am I? And it says I'm root. So the next command I'm going to run is ID. And again, we can see that it's root. So it looks like we successfully exploited the server and we have root access. We could go back and see if there are additional vulnerabilities like the web one on this system, or we could move into the next step within our methodology, which is specifically the command and control phase. But for now, I think this is sufficient for our first exploit against a live server using Kali Linux. So here's a pointer for everyone interested in becoming a professional pen tester. Even though I didn't say we should document our findings on this challenge, I want you to start thinking of now about documentation. If you really wanna be a professional pen tester, learning how to document your findings during a pen test is absolutely crucial. In reality, the report is the only thing we provide to the customer that allows them to understand what we did and what we found during the pen test and what steps they should follow to remediate those vulnerabilities. The truth is the report is what we get paid for, not the hacking. So the better you are at report writing, the better your career in pen testing will be. All right, so we've exploited our first server using Kali Linux and an image from VulnHub. 
Remember that ethical hacking is about learning, understanding security, and improving the security posture of our clients. Using a vulnerable server from VulnHub on our Pentest Lab is the best way to learn how to hack real-world vulnerabilities ethically and safely. Now that I walked you through your first, you need to go grab some more, find some walkthroughs, and just, just go to town. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe and like for more tutorials like this one. Remember to join our Discord server to answer any questions that you have about this challenge or to learn more about becoming a professional pen tester. So thanks for joining us and happy hacking.